Let's do something fun. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's do the tail. We can put the top coat on the tail, believe it or not. Now, if you want your tail to be a lot fuller, you could put another piece of core. So maybe I'll make mine a little bit more full in the center. Like that. All right, so to do the top coat on the tail, we have a couple different kinds of white in your supply pack. There's um, Serafina white, which is the very white, white. And there's um, white top coat, which is a longer, um, longer staple, a little bit more off-white. I'm gonna use the white top coat. And what I want to do, you could even mix them together a little bit if you need a little bit of you want to whiten it up a little bit or get a little bit of um, fuzziness to it I just want to wrap this white tip just very loosely right around just like that getting that white on there and the needles are what's gonna shape it and make it stay And then I'm going to make a little kind of mini pelt to wrap. I find that just wrap, loosely wrapping the tail um, just kind of gives it this fuzzy, natural look. This is um, kind of a, a more simple way to do a furry tail than actually having the stick off technique. Um, again, it's about scale. This is at this scale of critter, this just makes sense to me. So I want a nice little swath of the top coat, the red fox pelt, and then maybe some natural black towards the top because they get some black um, in their tails. And then we have this light Paulworth. I'm going to put a little bit of that towards the other end. And I don't know, you could put gray in it and put in a tiny bit more chestnut just to bring them together. Okay. I'm going to take this and wrap it loosely around the whole kit and caboodle and give it some stabbings. Some stabbings. Now, if there's any stripe you don't like or color placement that you don't like, you can just take a little bit more top coat and wrap it around. I don't want to stab the life out of it. You know, you're just trying to make this stick without losing the poofiness. Did you know that foxes have a scent gland at the base of their tail? At the, no, I didn't know. And it makes them stinky. It's like a musky yeah. stink. I didn't. I, I do know they have a smell. And um, I'm just blending a little bit of colors together to just do a little bit more at the end of the tail here. Makes me think of a skunk. Mm-hmm. And they sound crazy. Have you heard of fox? Well... There's a whole song about it. Yeah. <laughs> they make the craziest sounds. On my fact page, they use 28 different types of calls yeah. to communicate yeah. with each other. Yeah, it's, uh, if you hear something in the night and you're like, what the heck is that? It's probably a fox. All right. Maybe an infoxicated fox. <laughs> infoxicated. Okay. What's he doing there? Taking a little cyst? <laughs> chillaxing. What I like to do next, well, we got to put a chest on. I do that in white. And then I'll put the white across the belly. But before I put the pelt on, I like to do the face. Um, so we're going to do the chest and the white belly and then the head and then the pelt. And that's all she wrote. So to make the chest, I want to use my off-white core. And I'm going to take about a six inch piece and split it. Um, I really need about a third of this of this piece. So I'm kind of pulling off 
a third here. And then I'm gonna wrap the Zoli tool. It just makes a nice, very simple rectangle. So I'm gonna wrap a two inch section of the flat side. And I'd like to be able to go out and back. So I'm drafting this out so that I know I have enough to get back. And if you didn't have enough, you can um, take, you know, another another piece of core wool. But um, that that's good. So I'm going to slide that off. And then it gets attached. Um, unfinished end at the base of the neck and then the other unfinished end between the front legs, kind of wherever it lands. And it's a little tricky stabbing this on because you have a lot of wire in that um, shoulder area, so just be really careful how you stab here. Or you're gonna break a needle. Yeah, yeah. So just try to tack it down on each side of the base of the neck. And what that does is, when you look at it from the side, you get him unhumped here. Um, it gives you that that white chest. And just to build up the neck a little bit, I'm going to take some of my um, off-white core and try to um, restack so that I have a, as short of a piece as possible. Um, fibers going side to side and just stick it on felt it on the neck just needs a little build up before we put our pretty pretty colors on I'm sticking to the neck here I'm not going up on the head yet and for now I'm just gonna let this fuzz hang out on the each side and I'm gonna do something similar on the belly spread him out like he's getting ready for surgery and I'm gonna go some off-white across and then I'd like to mix again I have a choice I can use um, the white top coat or the Serafina white um, I definitely want to save some Serafina white for the muzzle so I'm not going to use too much of it but I am gonna blend them together. I feel like something in between is like perfect, you know, whereas the Serafina white is so white and the off-white is so off-white. So I'm just gonna blend them together and lay it across and stab that on. And I let this kind of blend into that gray that I put on the inner legs earlier, but mainly I'm stabbing it into the core of that was wrapped around the body and letting the fringe just stick off the sides for now. Are you ready for deep? Deep? Deep proverb. Yes. It, this is French, it is a stupid goose that listens to the fox preach. Yes. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Stupid goose. So is that saying that geese are stupid or that that particular goose is stupid? <laughs> uh, the one that listens to the fox. Yes. There's a lot of fuzz. A lot of extra fuzz. I'm felting down. All right. It looks weird, but you just let that hang out for a minute. We're ready to start the face. I'm all fresh and revived. Okay, this is a little tricky. I think the fox face is um, quite detailed and has a lot of shapes and angles that you have to try to try to get. So I'm going to hopefully explain that pretty well. Um, the first thing that I do is I make a little black nose and it's a little tricky to get this little black nose on here without much on here but 
I find that putting that on there first is more natural like because then you can put the muzzle on and it, it, it ends up getting like worked in versus doing the muzzle and then trying to put this little tip on that so this is this is the way I do it and um, you know after you make one if you want to try it differently you can so I want to make a small seed on the toothpick and I've got a thin you know four inch piece of black here I might not use all of it but I'm gonna do a little crisscross a slight um, kind of X shape as I wrap until I have a little seed that's a little bit bigger than a sunflower seed and then I'm gonna slide this off going to slide this off my toothpick has a little it's a little snaggy I think I can't, a snaggy. I can't get it off yeah yeah, yeah, it has this big Gash. splinter on it. And then when I felt this on, I want to put a point at the bottom and a point at the top. And what I'm trying to do is basically fold it to create, like if I were to be able to pinch this, you see that sharp angle? That's the tip of the nose. Whoa, that was a super fast zoom. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so to do that, I'm just gonna start, you wanna use a strong needle when you're trying to tack something. And I have to felt carefully because there's a wire in there. So I start with the bottom, you know, one end of the seed into the end of the nose. And then I'm gonna turn it this way. Move up a tiny bit. Okay. Please. <laughs> and then felt the other end of the seed onto the top of the nose trying to fold that seed in half. It's a noisy heater. Yeah, it is. See how like crazy that is? It's a little crazy. But um, once we put the muzzle and all the other pieces on, it'll be just right. It'll be just right. So it looks a little bit Sorry, I'm, I'm sure I'm in my own way, but... Okay. So, that's on there well enough. Um, okay, now, what I'd like to do, and I'm going to tr try this, usually, um, this is the way I've been doing it in classes, is create the face shapes before we actually put them on. So, the first one is a taco um, in in cinnamon core that's going to get attached right at the base of uh, the bridge of the nose here and go backwards. So um, what you would like is about a three inch piece of core wool. I'm going to restack this because that was a little fringy and weird. So a nice substantial um, piece of core wool. It's more like two inches actually once I once I restacked it. If you take away the fringe and I'm gonna make a taco I'm simply gonna needle felt across the center fold it over and felt the two sides together so I'm felting all over this area a little bit I'm not just staying right here moving around okay piece of cake right piece of cake or a taco whichever <laughs> Um, so that's done. So I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to make three uh, muzzle pieces. And I'm going to use the Serafina white for that. Just because these are small little, small little pieces. And one's going to be the chin. And two are going to be the muzzle. So if you're smart and you're watching this video ahead of time you will, without felting, <laughs> you'll have a direction. So these, I'm just pulling from the end and trying to get a little, um, kind of like one inch pieces. 
Let me move these aside. That might even be a little bit too much. Smaller is better. You can always add more. <clears throat> so I'm gonna make a taco. But I'm going to right away start to think about rounding this end out by kind of just gently encouraging the corners in and around. Nice and rounded. And I'm gonna do that three times. So basically, you're making a ghost, but you're starting with a simple fold over, like a taco, and then round. And keep that fringe, because you need that fringe. So nice and round on the tip here. I feel like it's so quiet now. It is that here was <laughs> shouting at us. I feel like I need to fill the void. That's my job. Yeah. You awake? Mostly. <laughs> Did you know that foxes are native to Britain? To the UK? Okay, but not here? Like they came with colonists? I'm not sure. Oh. It says they're native to Britain. Oh, okay. I might have to look that up. Yeah. All right. Very good. Now we have those three pieces. Next thing I want to do is make a nice wide triangle out of top coat. And that piece, the tip of the triangle goes to the nose, and then it comes back and creates this sort of brow forehead area. This, by the way, I found in our Focus on Faces class, yeah. helped my human face oh. to make that shape oh. very much. Because it was very confusing how to get the bridge of the nose and the brow to look right. And this piece worked. Okay, so I'm gonna use a tiny, tiny thin bit of core wool just so that it has a little bit of substance. But this piece, <clears throat> these pieces we wanna have a little bit of substance to, um, cause they're making you know this kind of muzzle shape. This piece we want to be on the very thin side. So I can, um, sometimes I feel like they're a little more golden on their faces. So I'm taking a tiny bit of my, um, it's actually my eye color and mixing that in, and then maybe a tiny bit of Polworth. Well, let me set that aside first. First, I'm gonna mix this um, Red Fox and the Golden together. I'm gonna lay that on top. And then as it comes towards the nose, I want to get a little bit lighter. So I'm putting this Polworth towards the front. Okay, so now I've got a two by two um, rectangle. I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna establish the center line. And then I wanna make a shape that's like, um, um, like a triangle but with a little bit of swoop to the a nice wide triangle is what I'm trying to say. And then I'm gonna fold these in. Let them overlap. See how broad and flat that is? <clears throat> and then I'm gonna hit it with the punch tool just a little bit. Apparently the American red fox, uh -huh. based on Hunter's accounts, have less vigor and less endurance in the chase than the European. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> Apparently, it's our... slow American foxes. Right. Um, okay, so now that's ready. What else do we need? Oh, ears. I think I'll do these pieces and then we'll do the ears. So let's start building our face. So the first thing that we wanna do 
is put the taco on. So what I'm gonna do is set it down, chin down, center the um, the round folded edge of the taco right where halfway back between the nose and the back of the head. So it should be where your um, um, white and brown meet. And I'm just gonna stab that down onto the bridge of the nose. Can you see this okay? Uh, should I be watching that? Because I'm learning about, <laughs> apparently it's a hot topic whether foxes are native to North America. Ah. And then each of these, I wanna tuck under the chin, leaving a little cheek poof on each side. Like don't pull it completely tight, let it fold and create a little poof. Yes, you can see it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now your fox has this debonair do going on. And then I could just tack this fringe down onto the back of the head. Still kind of leaving this fluff coming out to each side. Now we're gonna put on the muzzle pieces. This one turned out kind of nice and long and skinny, so I'm gonna make that the chin. And I'm just gonna, I want it to come set back from the nose a little bit because then the two side pieces are gonna come just in front of that. So just set back a little bit, tack it on. Let the fit fringe come down. Make sure you've got his head stretched out. You don't wanna lock it down. You want it nice and stretched out so that this fringe doesn't lock anything. While we're under here, let's get this neck covered. So I still just have core wool on the chest and neck here. I'm gonna take a little bit of white and a little bit of white top coat. So seraphina white and white top coat, mix them together. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna shingle up from the chest. So I'm gonna put my fringe pointing between the front legs and felt sort of the center one third of this piece. You're hitting some wire. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of wire in this area. I just kind of, if you just have a gentle bounce, your needles will not break. <laughs> and then fold that top one third over and felt it down. And we'll do that again. And the next piece will be a little easier to stay away from the wire. Just let this one overlap the last one a little bit. They have often a little um, gray under their neck here right under their chin. So the next piece, I'm gonna do a little bit of the Polworth. Mm, trying to decide if I'm gonna cut this in half. I think I will cut it in half, it's quite long. Restack it. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this here. Same technique. <laughs> Do you hear Milo? And then I just need a little bit of white to blend this together. Actually, let me do a little bit across and then a little bit going this way, up and down. All right, now we're ready to we'll keep going on the face. I'm just looking at this and see how long all this is. 
It's a little crazy. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm going to tease it out, trim it. And then felt it back down. Now it's a little more to scale. <laughs> All right. So the next pieces, this one is feeling a little wimpy. I'm going to firm it up a little bit, give it a more definitive shape. And I want this to come around, and it's got to come around and meet in the center in front of the nose. So I need to actually stab it and wrap it around a little bit. And then stab it into, I think one of the, one of the um, places that people, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Go wayward on the face, is they don't get everything has to be locked into your wrapped core, you know, your, your wrapped armature. All right, I need to tighten this one up too. So Ben Franklin said the sleeping fox catches no poultry. Right, true. So then I was like, did sleep? he say, like Ben Franklin, smart guy that's more of an observation so then I started thinking were they just smart observations <laughs> so you started looking at more Ben Franklin quotes well I just started to question Ben Franklin right right like yes you're like if duh you're sleeping exactly <laughs> Ben tell okay. me something I don't know <laughs> so all of this takes more kind of stabbing and finessing and shaping but now we've got our chin and our muzzle. So I want to put the last, well, not the last, but the next piece on. And that's this nice triangle that we made. And what I'm thinking is my eyes are going right set into this end of this taco near the bridge of the nose. Okay? So I want this piece, if I can, to, I kind of tease it out a little bit, like give, make it a little less perfect so that when you felt it on, it has some give. Sorry, it's hard for me to do this detailed stuff without leaning in. I want the tip to come right on over this black nose a little bit along the bridge of the nose very tightly so I'm trying to felt into that white that we wrapped on there now these rolled edges can create eyebrows they can if they don't it's okay you can make another shape but I'm gonna felt it back against the bridge of the nose and then leave these little kind of bumps because I'm going to set the eyes in there. So it's a little fussy and all of this takes a lot of little just kind of this is where your stabbing becomes your sculpting. So an eye there and an eye there. Now, foxes have a lot of triangles going on in their faces. They have a triangle here. They're sort of triangular from the tip of the nose back. Um, you'll see it on the reference chart. Now, one thing I've been ending up doing with these is making a little cheek poof out of the chestnut. And again, I can, um, the, the fox. Um, the red fox color. I can blend a little bit of golden into it. A little bit of this too. Just give him a little color variation on his face. 
<clears throat> and then I'm going to take this wispy piece. This is a real small amount of wool. And just fold it in half. So basically making a tiny, tiny taco. I can stab it a little bit if I need to to start to hold it together. Kind of like the muzzle pieces, but even smaller. And then I'm going to put the folded end right against the bridge of the nose and let the fringy end come out. And this is like an under the eye, basically the cheekbone under the eye. Might be helpful to put the eye in there so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's this, this piece right here. Ben Franklin said a lot of good stuff. All right, give me another one, even if it's not foxy. It's not foxy. Uh, we are all born ignorant, but one must work hard to remain stupid. That's a good one. <laughs> that is good. My dad sent me a interesting thing he was working on. He's writing about humanity and how in the beginning we're all biology. You know, we're just little biological beings and how as we grow and learn our spirit and our soul just develops more and more and our more environment more. shapes us yeah um, either write something worth reading or do something worth writing yeah that's a good one yeah. that is All a right. good one Ben he's, Franklin he's you, redeeming himself we'll give you props alright so we need two eyes and I do them out of black and sometimes I've been I've been just folding them rather than toothpicks because it gives me a little bit more um, flexibility because it's a little less hard of a of a shape. This is a little tricky. You got to stab that little black eye right into that spot. I'm using a strong needle, so like a 36. And I'm trying to keep it round. And remember their eyes are on the fronts of their heads, so try to work from the front. So I'm stabbing from the front versus, you know, from the side. So it's all fussy in their faces, these yeah. little foxes. Fussy. Well, and fox face. <laughs> less is more. Less is is. Too much fiber. Your yeah. fox definitely got stung. Yeah. So that makes it a hard project for beginners because, in general, beginners, you'll use too much wool. You know, things will get big. In general, some people don't struggle with it, but most people do. Starting to see it? Yep. All right. It's so, cute already. It's cute already. So how much fringe you leave, you know, shooting out and everything, it's up to you. Really getting this muzzle tight against the nose helps. All right. One thing that we need to do next is they have a gray marking that comes from the corner of their eye kind of forward along their muzzle. And for that, I'm going to use the gray core, this one. And you just got to try and get yourself a real fringy little bit. And this is an opportunity to get this nice and tight. Just lots of stabbing. Well done is better than well said. Yeah, that's the whole like, <clears throat> uh, not, is it judged by your actions more than your words or, but I don't know what the terminology, like the I don't know, but Ben Franklin is. probably said it. <laughs> 
We watched a really interesting movie last night called Captain Fantastic. Have you heard of it? No. And it was about a father. They're, they were ended up being motherless. But this couple decided to raise their kids in the wild, basically. Like, totally off the grid. These kids hunted. They played music. They gardened. They exercised. They rock climbed. They, you know, just did. They learned. They, they learned. They did not play a lot of video games. They did not play any video games. And then they have to kind of enter into the real world because um, the mom dies and they're going to go to the funeral and um, the mom's parents are kind of controlling uh. the funeral. It's not what she wanted. and Anyway. And then it just becomes kind of about which is what's right. You know, which... Is he, was he doing the wrong thing? Because these kids had no real world experience. Mm. They had a lot of knowledge. They were healthy, mm. fit. They could survive in the wild. But they didn't have a lot of social experience. Being around other people. Yeah, in a or setting, or te- in no like technology. You know. Yeah. So it was very very good. A I really liked it. Balance is yeah. the best probably. Yeah. Middle road. I'm thinking like New York City is kind of its own wild. Oh my gosh, no kidding. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. See how it's just stabbing, <laughs> just stabbing. So now we have ears, um, pelt. We can do the little line on the mouth, just some black. You try to kind of tease this out. You could use natural black if you want. Um, just try to make this a thin, thin little thread. And then I somewhat follow where the muzzle pieces come together. But then as I get back to the corner of the mouth, I diverge from that and just give it a little smile. Foxes have a cute little shape to their mouths. Come up on the cheek just a little bit. Pickup line, you ready? Yeah. Can I borrow your cell phone? I need to call animal control because I just saw a fox. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I need to call animal control. Sweet.